think I'm gonna get started now um, and let people trickle in. Uh, but hello everyone, uh, my name is Denise Lynn. I'm the program analyst for the Smart Chicago Collaborative. Uh, the Smart Chicago Collaborative, we're a civic organization in the city of Chicago that uses technology to improve the lives of residents. Um, so we work in access skills and data. So we care about whether people have access to the internet, uh, we care about whether they have the skills to use the internet and technology available to them. Uh, and then we also care about access to meaningful content, which we define as you know, data, whether it's policing data, or whether it's data about resources in our neighborhood. Oh, okay. So, um, I am the program analyst at Smart Chicago, and I run a few of our big ecosystem projects. Uh, probably the biggest one right now is Connect Chicago, which is an initiative to get more residents online. Um, I have a, a background in public policy, so I'm not a data scientist, <coughs> I, I'm not a programmer. I wouldn't even say I'm an Excel expert, but I really love to use Excel. I think about 90% of the data things that I do, I can do in Excel. Um, I've also used data analysis software like Stata and R, but today we're just going to stick with Excel. Because um, I think it's one of those um, underutilized tools, and I think I'm still learning new things all the time. Uh, at the very beginning of this session, I'm going to overview the things we'll learn. So just in case, you know, some of these things are um, functions you do all the time, and you think you might get bored, you're welcome to leave and go to another session. <laughs> but uh, we are going to look, too, at lobbyist data in the city of Chicago. So if that content is just interesting to you, then maybe you want to stay, regardless of whether you know how to do these formulas, functions, and build these pivot tables. So, um, and just to let you know, I crafted this session really uh, for people who just might want to learn more about how to analyze data to enrich, enliven, and inform a story. Um, not really make using data to visualize anything or make final products, but really using data um, to like shape evidence, to, um, to uncover something, to support something. Um, and so uh, with that kind of research mindset, that's really like how I, I crafted this. Um, so if you're thinking, okay, I've done things in Excel and I feel relatively comfortable in Excel, but I have a suspicion I could do more, that's like just the right attitude <laughs> to have for this. Great. Great. So we did introductions. Um, I'll breeze through these, just tricks and time savers. Um, I wanted to compile them in this presentation for you. Again, you can find this presentation uh, on the Smart Chicago Twitter page. We, this was the last thing we tweeted. So it's on our slide share, and you can download this. Um, basics. Uh, in case people are new to Excel, operations, um, sounds like you guys have a pretty good grasp on basic formulas, sums, averages, counts, um, and then there are lots of great cheat, sheet, cheat sheets out there on, on Google, so the internet's a wonderful place. Uh, this is a picture of my keyboard. I, I really love, like, love this. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these, but you can overlay these over Mac, um, uh, and... I know that it saved me a lot of time, and I just looked down. Can you can you see this? No. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. There are. I think they're over on this side. But um, this is really just. I can pass it around actually. And I'm not selling these or anything. But um, it's just something you put on top of your keyboard, and it displays all of the shortcuts for you. It's okay. Oh no, that's fine. Yeah, it's like a piece of plastic, um, like a keyboard protector for your for your Mac. Um, but uh, it just, oops. Yeah. Do you guys is this does this work for you guys? The sliding. Great. If I may interject, when you use those, you have to be really careful about not overheating your computer. You have to have like. Macs are designed to, as the keyboards are, an air intake. And so basically, like, you're blocking the intakes to your fans mm -hmm. when you put the... Yeah, so you should take it off every now and then. Um, 
Uh, no, that's a really good point. Uh, but yeah, if I am working in Excel for uh, an extended period of time, I, I like to use those. <laughs> All right. So um, I, you can order them on Amazon. I've seen uh, like quite a few of them. If you just search for like shortcuts, like Excel shortcuts Mac or Excel shortcuts PC, you should be able to see see some of them on on Amazon. Um, and I think they come from lots of different sellers and sources. You probably get something used. I got this one through work, so I'm very lucky. <laughs> I know. <laughs> So other time savers, um, shift space, you can select an entire row, control space, an entire column, um, control or command, depending on whether you have a Mac, that'll help you jump to the top of your workbook, and then um, control or command down, going to the bottom of your workbook. So again, like you can see all of these on the presentation, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Um, Excel will finish patterns for you, days and dates, um, anything you establish in a column. Um, I'll show you some of this later. And then double clicking on the bottom right box of a cell will continue the pattern for the rest of the workbook. Um, I'm always surprised by how many really smart people don't know about this one. It saves a ton of time. You do not need to keep scrolling <laughs> um, and, uh, and holding, so. Great, so I think really quick thing that we can do, and this is less about Excel and more about just a fast, easy mapping function. Um, those of you with laptops, uh, we are going to map Chicago's public libraries. And uh, I know this, for anyone that's never mapped anything, or you're thinking like, I don't use GIS, like I don't really, that's not what I do. Um, but you actually don't need any knowledge to, to map these addresses and locations. It's very easy. Um, so what we're going to do is, escape out of this. We're going to go to the city's open data portal. So um, so if you just go to the city's open data portal, and please let me know if I'm going too fast. We're going to search, oh, we'll just search libraries. Search library hour, hours. And there's a session this afternoon, too, that's diving deeper into the open data um, portal. Um, it's at 1 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what they're doing exactly, but it looks like they'll be, um, they'll be doing some, some more, working with more data in the open data portal. But so we're going to click uh, the first data set here. And this is the one you want. So you can actually map this um, already on the portal. So it looks like this right now. But we're actually going to do it ourselves, and I'll show you why in just a second. So back to this data set. I'm going to export CV, um, CSV for Excel. Great. So uh, we have our data. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new column. Um, some of you have, might have already done stuff like this, but um, I'm essentially going to um, map this later so I can distinguish between which libraries have a cyber navigator and which ones don't. So what is a cyber navigator? It's someone in a public library who trains people how to use computers, how to use the internet. Um, there also is data in this data set that tells you which libraries are handicap accessible, which libraries have a teacher in them. So that's something that obviously someone might want to know visually, like which libraries have certain features and which ones don't. Um, and then overlay that on a Google map to see, you know, which libraries are close to what public transportation stops and all of that. So we're going to create a new column. I'm selecting column D here. Insert. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an if function here. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, it sounds like based on what I heard, some of you have done these if functions before. Yeah. 
Oh, you're not? Okay. Well, I'm going to go over it anyway, so. <laughs> Great. So the if function is going to be if, and we're just telling um, Excel at this point that uh, I want to populate this whole column with um, certain information based on column C. So I'm telling Excel if um, this cell equals yes, and that's my criteria. Um, if that is true, I want the column to say Cyber Navigator. And if that's false, if C2 does not say yes, I want it to say no Cyber Navigator. Yes, yes. So um, the words, yeah, the word yes, the word cyber navigator, and the phrase no cyber navigator um, are in quotes. And I find that if I am typing in an if function and it's wrong, it's because I forgot to put in quotes or I put in quotes in the wrong place. Great. So that worked. And I'm going to do that shortcut I mentioned earlier where I'm just going to double click on the right bottom corner here. Magic. Uh, I'm going to call this new column I made group. All right. For those following along, does this, is this a good pace? Okay. So I'm going to take, well, I'm going to go back to my browser of choice and I'm going to go to batchgeo.com um, Has anyone ever used Batch Geo? I've tried. Yeah. I've, I've, I've had a lot of trouble with it. So. Yeah, it takes some experimenting to like get exactly what you want out of it. Um, uh, but this should work. So if we go back to the Excel um, spreadsheet that we had, if you select the whole sheet, either in the top left corner um, or do a control A, um, you want to copy it all. Go back to Batch Geo, click in here, and then paste. And then click Map Now when you do that. So it's going to take a minute or two. Um, but I want you guys to, uh, if you guys are curious, there's a button up here on top of Stop Geocoder um, that shows advanced options. So I use Batch Geo a lot just because um, I data crunch mostly for policy reasons. I want to see where things are, how programs are distributed across the city. Um, so it matters if there's a CTA station there, uh, what the surrounding blocks are like. Um, I might merge something like this with like, a list of public schools or a list of DFSS locations um, just to see, create my own data set and map that um, and see where those locations lie. Um, one thing you can do with Batch Geo uh, that might be of interest to you guys is you can cluster the pinpoints that they create if there's like a high volume of places. Um, and there's also a feature you can hide map addresses here. So if you don't want your map to show addresses for some reason, um, whether it's like whether it's a home address or something like that, then um, you can just click this box and prevent that from happening. So our map is almost ready. Yep, yeah, and there it is. And because we made that um, that nice column from before, and we labeled it group, um, we can see here on the map that. The blue pins are no cyber navigator, and the red pins are cyber navigator. So just by naming it group, it automatically goes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a code that like Google or the Batch Geo has like set that in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a really um, I I like Batch Geo just because um, I if I need to make a really quick map and see something visually, uh, then it's really great. Um, and all I have to do is copy and paste from an Excel file.
So one question, like if we just would have renamed the column above the teacher in the school, mm -hmm. we would have just renamed, because that's also a binary name. Yeah. If we would have renamed that column group, would it have been split out as, yes, there's a teacher in the library, no, there's a teacher in the library? So the reason why I wanted to create a new column that said cyber navigator and no cyber navigator versus yes and no, um, which is what it was, was because what Batch Studio does is it would have basically taken this red dot, it would have just said yes and no. Yeah, and so I wanted to change the label there because this is just going to display um, the text in your column. And what yeah. if you have two columns titled group? Um, I've actually never done that before. I think that um, you can make multiple groups. Um, let's see. Okay, so you can actually do this, designate, you can do hours of operation. Um, but it usually works best for binary groups. Um, and I often will do it this way, just so uh, if I need to take a screen capture of this and say make it a picture, then this key actually like, tells me something. Um, so is there a way to export this as something we can embed on a website or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can, um, well I'll have to title this map. Um, I don't need an account to do this, but if I make this, it's going to send me a link to um, to this map in my email address, and I can like edit the map. I can like edit the that map. Um, I don't know if you can embed without an account. It looks like right now, yeah, I don't think you can actually embed without an account. But you can um, get a public shareable link to, to the interactive map. Great. Um, is everyone good with that? Uh, can we move on? Yes. So um, I actually don't have an official Batch Geo account. I, whenever I want to make a map, I usually just do a one-off um, uh, map, and then I'll get it emailed to my personal email address. And um, that'll give me the shareable link. Um, and often I'll share that with someone if I want them to see the interactive map, like zoom in on places. Um, or I'll just take a screencast of it and stick it in a report if, like, I, I want to do it that way. Does it generate embed code so you can like, see the map? Um, so I don't. Let me look on. So, let's see the email I got. Yes, yeah, so actually in the email I got in my personal account, it did give me an embed code. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it get, gave me an embed code. Um, it gave me uh, kind of a shareable like view link that I can send to other people, and then a special link for myself um, that I can use to edit the map. Great. Um, so now we're going to get to the fun part. <laughs> Um, uh, we're going to use pivot tables and, and analyze data in Excel, and we're going to use the lobbyist compensation data from the Open Data Portal. So we're going to go back to the Open Data Portal, um, search uh, lobbyist compensation. Uh, and this first one is the one we want. Great, so everyone following along, or do you guys have the data set? This has 24,392 rows total, including the header. So we're going to export this, um, CSV for Excel. Going to 
save as. I'm just saving as. Test. Save. Great. So what I'm gonna do, what I always do, um, and I'm sure you guys probably do this as well. Um, when I work with data, I always just preserve the um, original data that I got. And so I'm going to copy and paste this and not touch my first sheet. I'm going to paste this into a new sheet and label it analysis. Um, so the first thing, um, I mean, we can do, has anyone worked with this data before? No? Okay, so let's, just to start off, let's make this easier to read. Um, so I'm going to do some stuff that some of you might have done before. Um, I'm going to you and freeze panes, freeze, freeze the top row. I'm also going to click a cell in the first row here, and I'm going to press the filter button right here. Um, and that way... I can sort all of the columns and, and rearrange the, um, the Excel workbook. So this data set, um, just uh, perusing it right now, it's, compensa it's uh, uh, lobbyist compensation data from 2012 to 2015. So every the unique features in this data set um, are the compensation IDs. Um, something interesting, you see a lot of lobbyists that repeat over and over again, um, and you actually see that some lobbyists have several lobbyist IDs. So this data set, because of that, it's a little more complicated to analyze, um, but that's a challenge that we can, we can, we can take on. Um, so in my opinion, there's one first thing, and you guys might have already done it on your laptop, that you might want to do with this data set and that's sorting the compensation column right here, descending. I mean, you kind of want to see what the biggest number is, right? So largest to smallest. So we see that a very lucky person named Teresa Mintel uh, got $350,000 from the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce um, and for about three months worth of work. So that's, that's pretty good. So you can also get this number. Um, we can see what the smallest is, six dollars. Um, uh, we can also get this number by inputting formulas, the min and max formula that will uh, show us, you know, um, the smallest number in any particular column or the largest number in any particular column. So. We can also calculate the average for the column. And this is a column of interest that we have. So the average compensation amount, um, about $7,000, a little less. We can also get the median. which is less. Um, so we know that these big numbers here are driving up the average. Um, we, has anyone done a count if function? Uh, great, so um, a count if function will basically just tell me, oops, uh, if I, um, if I wanna count, or if you have a question like, how many compensations have been above, I don't know, $100,000? Instead of sorting like this and then just literally counting and scrolling, we can do equal sign count if, and then our range, um, like the column or the cells we're looking at, H2 to H2432, and then our criteria. So that's going to be, quote, more than 100 thousand dollars end quote so I run 25 so that's easier than sorting and counting um, and so 
I actually, in this presentation, let me show you, um, I've outlined a few like cool things or maybe for you some new, some new um, formulas that you can put into Excel, which is essentially a giant calculator to figure out or analyze some of this data. Um, but going back to this, um, so in your opinion, is there, is there something that you want to, to get out of this data set? Like looking at this, there's 24,000 rows, there's 24,000 lobbyist compensations. What's like a question you have about this? Lobbyist. Yeah, so we can figure that out using a pivot table. Um, so the tricky thing about this data set is, um, you guys will notice that the lobbyist first name and last names are in different columns. Um, and that's tricky because like, so what if I wanted to do a count if or a sum if, which is like a function that I can do to add up every single compensation line if there are a particular name shows up, but like some of these last names are pretty common, right? And some of these first names are also pretty common. And the IDs, some lobbyists have like three different lobbyist IDs. So like, you know, the sum if function of Excel that usually works beautifully doesn't help us. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to uh, make a pivot table to tell you exactly what the question you just asked. Um, what was your name? Dan, that was a great question, Dan. So we are going to create a pivot table. Um, and I know some of you have done this before, um, but we're gonna do it again. <laughs> so I'm going back to the original data here. Um, I'm gonna make copy that, make a new sheet, and paste it in. Uh, so I'm gonna delete this column right here, the F column, just because pivot tables get cranky if there are blank cells. So. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to create a new column. Um, and I'm going to name this column Lobbyist Full. So we're going to create a new column that has the full name for the lobbyist because some of the first names are really common, some of the last names are really common, and the IDs are not useful to us, unfortunately, for sorting and understanding the total compensation. There's a really easy way in Excel to do this. I think if you had asked me like five years ago, I'd be like, oh, you have to copy and paste like those things, and it's like, no, you don't have to do that. Um, you actually just have to do equal sign. Um, um, concat uh, concatenate. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do is we're going to combine two cells. So we're going to click E1, E2, comma, or I think actually, when in doubt, put this keyboard. When in doubt, put quotes around everything. E2 space nope just kidding there aren't quotes in there no quotes yeah I think that the quotes will just be for the middle so I want to make sure there's a space in there so you're gonna put a space in quotes Awesome. So 24,000 cells, we have the full name now. Great. So we're going to create a pivot table. And a pivot table, uh, for those I don't know, um, although I, some of you do, uh, is just a really great way to create a table where you can constantly regroup, rearrange, and resum the data in your workbook. And if you have a really giant worksheet, it's just it's so useful. Um, and you can get exactly what you want out of the data. So I'm going to select one cell here. I'm going to insert a pivot table, um, and this is right, so just press OK. Great. So is everyone, everyone good? Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is to answer Dan's question. Uh, we, oh, sure.
Um, so to make a pivot table, and let's go. Oh yeah, Dan's question. So Dan wanted to know which lobbyist makes the most money. Um, and that was really complicated in our last uh, worksheet when we were just doing the calculations. In that worksheet, we could have done an average of a column. We could have counted how many times a certain lobbyist um, gotten had gotten compensated and how much money they had gotten. But because of the way the data was stored, um, uh, and the last names and first names not being together and the IDs being so complicated, we really couldn't do that. Um, and it was just a very difficult thing. And so the pivot table is going to let us group by lobbyist um, and then see not only how much lo a lobbyist made, but see all the clients that lobbyists had. Because some lobbyists had more than one client. So because we want to group with Dan's question, our primary interest um, is the lobbyist themselves. So we're going to put lobbyist full right here. We're going to drag that into filters because that's like our kind of our primary category here. So drag that in. Um, drag and drop client name, this, um, into row labels. Um, and then drag and drop compensation amount into some values. Great. So uh, I'll just tell you off the bat uh, well, actually, let's get rid of client name for now. Drag that back to this list. And put the lobbyist full name into rows. So now we have a list of every lobbyist, every lobbyist full name, and the sum, the total amount of money they made from 2012 to 2015. So if you click one of these numbers here, um, you should be able to filter. So let's do largest to smallest. So to answer Dan's question, John Kelly Jr. made the most amount of money from 2012 to 2015. He made 20, uh, 20 million dollars. Yeah, so I just went up here. So right now I'm at home. Um, you want to click the A to Z sort and filter. Um, and I can filter smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So this lobbyist made $40, the smallest amount of money. Um, largest to smallest. Yeah. So let's say I want to know more about this guy, John Kelly Jr. Um, and I want to know how many clients he had. How many clients do you think he had? Well, let's find out. <laughs> so we're gonna make, um, we're gonna take this lobbyist full name. We're gonna put it in filters because I want to only look at John Kelly Jr. So for pivot tables, like I said, you can group and regroup and only look at like a very detailed snapshot of the data you have. So what I want to do is I basically want to filter by this one guy. So I want to filter by a lobbyist full name. Um, I'm interested in the clients that he served, so I'm going to drag and drop client name into rows. And for lobbyist full, oh, so I'm looking for this guy, John Kelly. And I can also select multiple items if I want. So these are all John Kelly Jr.'s clients. Um, and again, that sums up to the number we saw before, um, a little over $20 million. Uh, so yeah, we see CVS in here, we see DeVry, Safe Haven. Um, uh, if we were to go back into uh, the document, the lobbyist data compensation, we'll see you know the Lucas Museum there. They spent a lot of money. Um, if we wanted to make a new pivot table, this one's very interesting to see not just how uh, how much certain lobbyists made, but how many how much clients spent. We can go back to our pivot table sheet. Let 
one. So I'm going to insert a new pivot table. Okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is drag and drop client name. into row labels and then sum of compensations into our sum value because that's always the thing that we're interested in adding up. Great, so now we have every single client um, and the total amount of money they spent from 2012 to 2015. Um, and we're going to sort this again. Um, uh, I think largest to smallest is most interesting. So. <laughs> We're going to sort largest to smallest. And the American Beverage Association invests in the most amount of money, followed by Uber. Um, so a tricky thing, though, and this is another feature that a pivot table can help with, um, some of these clients have several names. So I think, like, CVS has a few client names and client IDs. Uber has three names. So they have Uber, Uber Technologies, and Uber Technologies Incorporated. So we're going to create a pivot table that helps us understand um, not only what a cl one client name is spending, but like what several related client names are spending. So we're going to put client name here because it's our primary filter. We're going to put it under filters. Interested in that. And let's say for each client, I want to know the lobbyists that they're hiring. So we're going to put lobbyists full in our rows. Or actually, we're going to put lobbyists full in columns. And then we're going to put rows as the compensation amounts. Because that would be interesting to see how much they pay out per compensation. You let the little wheel spin. It's going to be a good one. All right, and so now... Um, I'm going to select multiple items. I want to know everything that Uber spent from 2012-2015. Um, um, that is the sum of compensations. Yeah. For, so I drag and dropped the, um, the compensation amount into this. Yeah. Um, so the rows are the compensation ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I want to see this data. So um, this is why it's like when you're learning pivot tables, it's really good to experiment to see what they look like when you do different things. But um, I really want to see the data broken up by compensation ID and by lobbyist for particular, for particular clients. And so if I'm interested in only looking at Uber or all the Uber names, I'm going to search. And I'm only going to select these three. And I'm going to press OK. All right. So looks like we have let's see, I'm going to refresh the thing. those pivot tables being little. Okay, and that's good enough. But um, So it's not broken down by client ID here on this screen, but we have broken it down by lobbyist. So these are all the lobbyists that Uber um, hired between 2012 and 2015, and the total amount of money given to each of them. Actually, no, that can't be right. Let's 
let's see. So I think something went wrong here. Um, it didn't take, yeah, I think you're right. All right, there we go. I'm going to select multiple. Great. There we go. Yeah, so here we go. Great. So these are the six lobbyists that you were hired. Um, and they spent uh, about $3.27 million. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions about pivot tables or Excel? Yeah. Odette? Um, I had some trouble, like, syncing pivot tables. Mm hmm Yeah. I mean, so, um, like, wait, what, what has been the problem specifically? Mm hmm Yeah, I haven't had that issue. Has anyone else had that issue? I think it's kind of have to do with like labeling and colors. You know, like sometimes like you import a different uh, CSV file, so you just have to ensure that you're like not saving it. As a CSV, yeah. So you yeah. Saving it as a workbook, as a latest version of Excel workbook. Mm -hmm. so you have to be yeah. Yeah. So one of the first things I did was I saved as. So I, when I download from the Open Data Portal for the city. Um, uh, I don't know if anyone else saw this issue, but if you try and download immediately as an XS, um, Excel SX file, um, you're not going to get all the rows sometimes, if, especially if it's a large data set. So you'll always want to download as a CSV for Excel and then save as immediately, which is what I did. So I don't know if um, the projector cut it off, but I saved this as um, an Excel SX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So you don't get all the rows? Sometimes yeah, yeah, you, it's, what? Sometimes when you, when you download it in a certain format, it just like randomly cuts. Yeah, it'll out. notify you. So usually in the oh. first, in A1, there'll be like a sort of a notification that says, um, not all the rows downloaded, go back to the open data portal to download the, um, the rows that are missing. Yeah, so it won't do it, it won't like not tell you, um, which is good. Yeah, that's frightening, right? So. <laughs> and it's only for larger data. Yeah, but if this, if you had done that for this, you only would have gotten um, 22,000 rows instead of 24,000 rows. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, there are a few more things from the presentation, um, like a few more formulas and all of that, uh, that uh, I, I put in there, but um, I'm happy to ask questions, answer questions, um, and you guys can also just play around, play around with that. Um, and, and look at the presentation too. But yeah. do you have any favorite like um, books or like Excel for Dummies or like work systems? Do you have a favorite handbook that's like here's how to advance through Excel? Yeah. So there is um, a really there's a good cheat sheet. There are a lot of great cheat sheets. Um, one that I put on here. Uh, is just like on a nice infographic. Um, so this is like an infographic that literally tells you like it, it takes inventory of every single uh, formula that you can do and like all of the shortcuts that you can take. Um, so it's a pretty great breakdown. Um, so this link is in my presentation. Uh, I also have a few other resources um, that I included in the presentation for you guys. Um, so, yeah, so here are a few great ones. Um, the Excel helps, actually, the second link that I posted here. Um, it's a list of every single function you can do in Excel, grouped um, by what they do. Uh, so I actually find that to be really great. Um, 
Uh, there are a lot of online Excel resources. Um, there also are a lot of tutorials on YouTube. I don't know if I have a particular favorite. So here, here's the website I was talking about. Um, you can look at the most popular functions, um, financial functions, date and time, logic. Uh, and I also included a few visualization tools here. So we played with one, uh, Batch Geo, but there are lots of other tools online where you literally copy and paste or upload an Excel uh, file and you can do something cool with it um, without really needing to know anything else. So those links are up here as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I hope it was useful. Um, thanks for crunching numbers with me in Excel on a Saturday after, like morning. Um, that's how I like to spend my Sunday. Yeah. Oh, and if you guys have any questions, this again was tweeted out of the Smart Chicago account handle um, Smart Chicago. And this whole presentation is up. I even recorded it, and so uh, we'll probably be putting that up too. Um, and you can tweet at me with questions. Um, happy to help. But yeah. Any other questions about this data set or, or anything else? Great. All right. Well, thank you guys for, for coming.